everyone, welcome to the Joel Hansen Show. Yes, we're back with another episode here with my good friend, Mr. John. If you guys have been watching for a while, you've seen him eat a lot of Wagyu beef with me. So, but here we are, not only to have the best Egyptian food in the GTA, but apparently the best Egyptian food ever. John, how do I pronounce the name of this restaurant? Masrawi. Masrawi. So John is Egyptian, so of course when we're eating Egyptian food, always great to have a good friend who is Egyptian. So very traditional spread we have along in front of us here. I can't wait to dig into it. This is a moderate amount of food for us, so nothing too crazy today. Just, you know, a half a dozen or eight or nine different dishes, maybe a little bit more, but lots of fun. It's going to be delicious, and we are very blessed and lucky to actually have the owner here himself, Mohammed. So Mohammed, what do we have in front of us? Because I would absolutely butcher all these pronunciations. No, you're going to do awesome. Uh, this is the most traditionally Egyptian uh, cuisine that we can possibly serve in the GTA. Everything's made as if you were to eat at my house. That's exactly how we serve it in the restaurant. So we'll begin with the starters. As you can see here, that is hummus, a uh, very common Middle Eastern um, cuisine. Baba Ghanou, which is roasted eggplant. And then Bissara, which is very specific to Egyptians, I, I believe. Um, it is the same dip version of hummus to chickpea, but this is fava beans. Egyptians are obsessed with fava bean to the point where you see these beautiful falafel known in Egypt as tameya. They are made from split fava beans. So when you open one of these and split it in two, it is green on the inside, coriander, parsley, leaves. Okay, over here we have a traditional Egyptian fatta, which is uh, small grain Egyptian rice soaked in uh, garlic and vinegar with a braised lamb shank on top of that and you put that delicious tomato garlic sauce right on top. Right there you have what is called or what is known like a beef patty on super steroids, okay? Woo! It is called hawaoshi. Hawaoshi is ground beef mixed with our special spices stuffed into our Egyptian baladi bread then baked in the oven, okay? I love it, that's actually one of my personal favorites, okay? Well, it smells delicious. In front of you, my brother, we have here uh, mombar, which is basically like a traditional Egyptian sausage uh, stuffed with our uh, secret recipes. It's basically like a rice stuffing, has dill, has coriander, has a whole bunch of love in there. Um, then we have our mixed grill, which is comprised of Egyptian chicken tikka. I know when you hear chicken tikka, you hear that in a lot of different cultures. Um, ours is a very specific to Egyptian culture, uh, yogurt, onion, garlic, lime, cilantro marination, uh, grilled to perfection. You have your kofta, which is your minced meat, and you have your kebabs. Over here, you have the most, uh, I'd say the national dish of Egypt, which is called koshari. Koshari is the staple dish of Egypt. Uh, eaten by the richest of the rich, the poorest of the poor. Uh, it is the people's food. It is rice, lentils, pasta, chickpeas, caramelized onions, tomato garlic sauce with a garlic vinaigrette. And over here you have the farro soup, also known as monocheya. It is a mallow leaf soup, traditionally eaten with rice or with bread. Okay, so that's going to be interesting to see how that meets your palate. This is moussaka. Unlike the Greeks, our eggplant is baked okay in a tomato garlic based sauce all right um and then over here you have our specific to this restaurant delicious calamari and shrimp the calamari is to die for it is my favorite starter that we serve here nice. uh i really mean this guys i hope from the bottom of my heart you guys enjoy every bite okay i'm sure we will well thank you so much mo enjoy. really appreciate it and uh john ready to get eating <laughs> i'm ready enjoy take care thanks, awesome. thanks so much john where do you want to start brother so let's start with the sauces so typically, yeah, yeah. So it's hummus, it's uh, baba anoush. Do you know what baba anoush is? Uh, it's, like a, it's like, so chickpeas turn into hummus. Okay. Uh, eggplant turns into baba anoush. Okay. And then fava beans turns into uh, this thing right here. So you just dip, you, you grab pita bread, dip her in and see how you like it. Mmm. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Dude. The spices on that hummus are exceptional. Mm. It's like a kind of like curryish, not curry. Cumin, cumin, cumin. I like hummus, but baba anish is like my favorite, mm. and you need to try that, bro. I will definitely try it. It's almost like a uh, you know, like you know some tahini, but the baba baba anish or baba ganoush. It's baba ganoush, but it's like ah anish. Baba anoush. <laughs> yeah, dude. There we go. There you go. Here we go, guys. Baba Anoush. 
And then, um, mm. oh wow, mm. here's the flavor from that. I've never had anything like that before. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. So this is the tamea or falafel. Mm -hmm. We call it tamea. It's like traditionally it's made with uh, chickpeas, right? Chickpeas. But, like Mo said, if you open it up, it'll be green inside. Oh, it is green. Completely different flavor. Oh wow, very different flavor. Mm -hmm. I almost get like a like a dill flavor. Dude, that's delicious. Yeah, it's like super fresh. I would say it's like herby. Mm. That's really good. And this is the fava bean dip. I'm gonna try this fava bean dip. And there's onions on it too. Great. Mm. 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 Very fresh, very herby. It carries that same flavor as the uh, the, the falafel, which makes sense for both fava beans. So this, bro, the uh, the fava bean dip. Yep. These crispy onions. It's the same one that they use here in the kushri. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah, it's very delicious. Caramelize it and get it nice and crisp. Great flavor. All right, we've got some calamari here. We've got some shrimp. Looks very delicious. So, Mo said that this calamari is like none other we've had before. I'm ready to put that to the test. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Very meaty. A lot of good texture. That's delicious. Can we what have is this sauce? I'm not sure. I think it's a, ones are probably garlic. Garlic sauce. Oh my goodness, bro. Good? Try that. That's nuts. All right. Trying their garlic sauce. Everything, of course, house made here. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, man. Ooh. Oh, whoa. <clears throat> I don't think I almost just died from a sauce before. That is that is actually by far. I think it's tahini. One of the best garlic sauces I've ever had. That's fantastic. Dude, I'm with you. That garlic sauce is phenomenal. Try a shrimp. Oh, man. Great flavors. I'm like, this is phenomenal. This is one of the best shrimps I've had, especially in that garlic sauce. It's crispy, super crispy. It's battered, but it's light. Doesn't seem heavy. That's beautiful. I would recommend. So far, the calamari takes the cake for me. Calamari is great. That's yeah. nuts. So this says how she, right? So it's it's like a a sandwich with minced meat in it. Like you said, it was mixed uh, beef, lamb. lamb. Yeah. <clears throat> there's onion like, in there, there's parsley on top. It almost reminds me of like a pita. Like, it's kind of like a pita bread sandwich kind of thing in there. Mm-hmm. So the bread is technically not pita bread. It's like a, an Egyptian type of bread that's made just with whole wheat and uh, cracked wheat. Yeah, very grainy. Yeah. Fibrous. Yeah, yeah, but it's delicious. Enjoy it. Cheers. Ooh, dude. That's nuts. Those flavors. Oh my goodness. I think this is more garlic sauce. Yeah, this is the one that, that came with it. <clears throat> oh, it came with tahini. Mm. The beef and lamb mixture, beautifully spiced. There's like a, on a level of heat level, like a one to 10 spicy. It's a 0.5, but there's just so much flavor going on in my mouth. It is rich, it is savory. So the tahini is actually the intended sauce for the sandwich, but I'm telling you guys, you can't go wrong with this garlic sauce. Dude, the garlic sauce is too good. This, this is nuts. Like, easily one of the best I've ever had. I have a feeling we're gonna need more garlic sauce. Yeah, super impressed by this. How do you pronounce it again? Um, Hawaushi. Hawaushi. So, <clears throat> so the main thing I noticed with Egyptian food or with any culture's food, if you ask somebody if they go to Egyptian restaurants and they're Egyptian, or if they're uh, Indian, if they go to Indian restaurants, usually they say, ah, not so much, my mom makes it better. But everything I've tried here so far tastes ridiculously authentic. <laughs> the flavors are on point. They, they put emphasis on each and every single flavor as though they're making something for their family. Um, and I think it's incredible. Like this is, dude, this is really good so far. The flavors are fantastic. I've definitely uh, never had flavors like this before. Let's try uh, what I end up. Sure. So this is grape leaves. So grape leaves with rice and uh, ground meat inside, and then just different kinds of spices based on who's making it. Ooh, 
Yeah, it smells beautiful. And then I assume this is a, uh, a yogurt based sauce here. Kind of like tzatziki, but different. Mm. I really like that. Even without the sauce, it's phenomenal. It's very moist. There is rice in the middle. I'm getting a, ooh, it's such a complex spice. It's like a warm spice. Almost reminds me of like Christmas in a way, but wow, like that, yeah, that dude, that's, that's really good. It's, is it pickled? There's, there's like an acidic, I think, I think, don't quote me on this, but there's like an acidic vinegar type yeah. of uh, feel to it. And there's uh, tomato, like the tomato sauce on top, I believe is where the acidic flavor comes from. Yeah, there's some vinegar or something in there. Very, very good. Let's try some of this meat. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, a lamb shank. I and John both love meat. So we're like both been eyeing these platters of meat here. Just Sing like getting ready for it to be devoured. There's a lot of patience in making these videos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Anybody who's been to one of my events understands how long this process takes. Okay, dude, that just fell apart. There's like, you guys couldn't even see that. John, that's just not even fair, okay. man. Here, we gotta let's, show this. Dude, just, let, let's, just, let's probably just like pull it off the bone. Look at that. Look at that tenderness. That just fell off the bone. That is ridiculous. We have a naked bone here. And anybody who's cooked or, or handled meat before knows how difficult it is to get it to a point where it can just fall right off the bone. We smoke meat, and that's like a 12 hour process to get it to that point. Beautiful braised lamb shank. So let's try this. Oh wow. Even just that lamb, man. That lamb is great flavor to it. Mm. It's not gamey. Sometimes my issue with lamb is it's gamey, but this is definitely not what's going on. I tried this rice too. You mentioned this rice had some special stuff going on. Short, short grain rice. There's that vinegar on it. Yeah, and it has vermicelli noodles in it. Oh. So that you see those like small little tiny noodles? Yeah. I'm a fan. Honestly, I'm usually on the biggest on rice, but I would eat all that rice. Mm. Dude, I love that vinegar. That acidic vinegar flavor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's delicious. Egyptian got it going on. And it, dude, that's that's actually a flavor you'll see like very consistently in Egyptian cooking. So this koshiri, I don't know if you want to try it next, but that's the that's the main thing that's going on. And the sauce that he uh, mentioned right over there, yeah. the sauce that you put on top of the koshiri, it adds that vinegar type acidic flavor, you but it not. kills it. Like it's good? It's fantastic. No, it kills in a good way. In a good way. John, let's try this sausage. Okay. So this apparently is a sausage which, when you find out what's in it, or some people are a little more hesitant to try it, but I'm ready to try it. And it is a traditional sausage in an intestine. So yes, traditional sausage uses an intestine as a casing. But it's much thicker if you look at the casing itself. Yeah. Than like a normal sausage, you mean? Right, exactly. It looks really good though. Here's what the inside looks like. They kind of flash fried it. So uh, let's give it a go. I get almost like a dill uh, smell to it. Good texture, a little bit of a heat to it. There's no aspect that tells me it's not like a normal sausage. The casing is not weird, even though it's an intestine. Really good flavor, but definitely it's, it's rice. Like mm -hmm. it is a rice sausage through and through. All right, let's try this. So, so you said pour everything on it, right? Yeah, so you kind of go in steps. So we so, got this vinegar. Should we put this on first? Right. Yeah. No, so, th so there's rice on the bottom, macaroni on top, and then it's uh, caramelized fried onions, and then chickpeas, chickpeas on top. So you would put that last. Put it last? So it would be like, you put the tomato sauce on top, and right. I pour it? Do it dark. So we're drenching it in tomato sauce, which I'm good with. Like yeah. tomato sauce. <clears throat> and then here is the caramelized onions. And you will never go wrong with having more of these. Like okay. the more the merrier. Nice. This is the, the best. Yeah, I, at least for me, this is the best part of the dish. Okay, cool. Woo! Yeah, John is not holding back. And then this is a hot sauce. And what is life without spice? So just, just pour that on. Load it on, brother. But as Mo was saying, the most important thing about, uh, oh, about this, this kushri is that you get a bite of every single ingredients in every single bite. All right, but well we need this one for race on too. And he said he is very liberal with it. So I will just, as we have been with this whole dish, there you go, is that enough? Uh, I'd say a bit more. Okay, we're doing very, very liberal with it. I don't know if you guys have t can tell, but this dish went from looking relatively plain to absolutely extravagant in like three seconds. Thank you for that, John. Pasta, 
beans, fried onions, hot sauce, vinegar. It looks very, 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 very good. Like the ultimate pasta salad. Mm. Woo! Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Mm. That's it, man. So this is Egyptian street food at its best. Wow. I assume I couldn't like that. It is rich. It is very savory. It's actually very savory. For like a rice noodle dish, I wasn't expecting it to be so savory. What's, I'm going to put more of this on? Yeah, please. I'm try, I, I really like the vinegar aspects in all these dishes with the rices. I'm just going to load it up. We're getting that tomato. The tomato is adding a little bit of like a, a bit of a mouthfeel. Almost a familiar flavor of acidity. Same as that vinegar, but very savory. Those caramelized onions and stuff. This light, this like crunch and the sweetness that comes from the onions as well is like it's fantastic. Very, very good. You definitely want the hot sauce on it too, because it's not the, the bit that was on there, it's not spicy in the sense like my mouth is burning, but it just adds a really nice dynamic. That's a good dish, man. Yeah. So this is about as traditional as, as you it can gets. Get. Like I said, the type of food you'd see on the street, no matter who you are. You, you enjoy kosher and you can afford it. That's the biggest thing about it. Oh, it's really, they, they throw in like four carbs together in a dish, which is... Uh, they said rich, poor, everybody eats it. I see why, it tastes good. Yeah. Simplicity adds best. All right, so next we are going to hop into our meats here. So we got some triple A sirloin beef in here. We have, what is, what's that thing you like? Kofta. Kofta, which is like a... Ground beef? Yeah, it's ground beef, it's basically kebab, but Egyptian style. And then a chicken tikka, which is not to be mixed with any other kind of tikka. Not right? Indian tikka. Nice. Yeah. Alright. So it's it's uh the chicken tikka, I think you were saying has like yogurt sauce and kofta. Dude, that's good. Mm. You get like parsley flavors, you get the flavors of that grill, which is excellent. Yep, the charcoal. So the mark of a good Egyptian restaurant is their ability to uh, to make kofta that isn't dry, right? It's flavorful and it's also moist. A lot of places will make kofta doesn't have the it has a flavor profile, but it's super dry, or it has uh, it has the moisture, but it doesn't have the flavors. This place makes proper kofta. This is delicious. And uh, my dad is known for his kofta. Obviously, every Egyptian is going to say uh, that. But I would actually put this on par with that, which is a very strong statement. This is really good. You want to try, try some sirloin? Yeah, I'll try the beef, man. So I got some of their beef. Definitely got some marinade going on with that beef. It, kind of, it has an Egyptian spice to it. I wish I knew what it, like, I don't know how to call it, though, but it's, it's like, there's like Egyptian flavor to it. Is it like slight cumin or? No. I can't figure it out, but it's... Maybe it's cumin. Or, yeah. Well, maybe. So, so the main thing with Egyptian meat is, at least I find, there's always a bit of an herby flavor, which you don't find in a lot of cuisines. Herby flavor, I can definitely work with that. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's what I would like to say is maybe the Egyptian one. I found that chicken. That chicken I'm curious to try. Well, I'll try it in this chicken. So here, Mr. John. Thank you, sir. Can't hold a man away from his sauce. Nope. Hmm, okay. Chicken is actually very, very moist. And I picked the white, like the white portion, the breast. So this should be the driest, but this is very, very moist. I can tell there's some uh, some citrus, some kind of lemon in that marinade. It's virtually boneless, actually, which I'm super impressed with. You can get the grill flavor. So I think what he did was, he cooked it on the grill, and then they put it into the oven. Yeah. And after they took it out, they threw it on the grill again. So the char is actually, I actually really like the char, and it's still moist at the same time. It's very moist. Chicken is very impressive. So next we kind of have like traditional soup here and eggplant. Yes. What is, uh, what is the soup? <clears throat> so the soup, it's called uh, molaheya. You make a chicken broth. They put something called mallow or molaheya, that's the, that's the name of the actual plant. And they cook it inside of the broth. Is that what makes it so thick? Yes. So it almost has a bit of a gelatinous texture to it. It's kind of gummy. So if you look at the sauce or the soup, you see the way it pours. It's gelatinous, which is, it can be off-putting for some people if they're not used to it, but oh. it is, it's actually, it's full of flavor, it's really delicious, and- um, Try anything once. And it's super nutritional. Another marker of a great restaurant is how they how they make their rolaheya. So I will be judging them based on this. So I want to try it just by itself. I know they said it's normally served over rice, but yeah, it is like, 
Yeah. It's definitely gelatinous, quite viscous. Have yourself a spoonful. Cheers, mate. Let's try it. I'm very inquisitive. Oh. That's that's, Malahaya. that's really good. That's Malahaya. Geez, I don't know why you may be afraid of that. Yeah. It tastes great. It's super light. Like a, yeah. but because it's chicken broth, it's not you don't feel like it's too fatty or it weighs no. you down or anything. It's like a very light thing to have. You're supposed to add it on rice. As such, you can be pretty liberal just because because of the light flavor, it's not gonna be overburdening or or get to the point where it, it has a bad effect on the rice. I'll try it on some rice there. Just doused it in the rice. That's just it. The rice in it. As much as you want though. So yeah, like I'm gonna show you the texture of it. And like so for my palate, as somebody who's not familiar with it, it's very, very good. I, I don't taste like the chickenness of it, but if you kind of see the texture, see it is a little bit thick, almost gelatinous. But what I do definitely get, or the flavors I get, I almost describe it like a, like it's a lot of green in it. It almost reminds me, I don't know, like a, I don't want to say like a parsley soup, but like if you're, not a parsley soup, mm, what's that? Like a chimney, chimney cherry soup. There, that's it. Like that's kind of like a thinner chimney cherry is kind of the textures you get. It's very earthy. The gelatinous feel in your mouth doesn't really stay. It kind of just disintegrates. So I have my pile of rice. I have my soup. And normally, so mm. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. So when my mom makes this, she'll make the chicken broth like from scratch, and then she'll make the molaheo with the broth, and then serve chicken on the side. So I think classically, this would be a great dish to have with like one of the tikka on the side or any kind of chicken mm. dish that they serve. That is a great idea. Yeah. Do that tikka, which I love, and this is a side dish would be really really good. And you just you, you take the chicken and. and dip it right into the soup, and it's, it's amazing. So this is an eggplant dish, a traditional eggplant dish in Egypt. It is cooked eggplant in a tomato sauce. Everyone kind of does it different. Some, uh, some cuisines will make it more like dry with less tomato sauce. This is like a moderate wet. Um, it looks good. Yeah. I, find, I feel like, that, like this looks very familiar to like some things I would have had in other cuisines. Definitely this is the Egyptian version, which looks really good. I will say so. Cheers, Cheers brother. Really nice flavor. Tomato wheat, a little bit of acidity. The eggplant has a really nice mouthfeel. I see there's some roasted peppers in there. There's a little bit of oil with it. What I'm thinking, like the way, because of how it tastes, it tastes like they took the eggplant and, and baked it separately. And then after baking the eggplant, and I'm not sure if they boiled it, but after baking it, they would have cooked it in with this tomato sauce where they just take all the ingredients separately and throw them in. And that's why, I don't know if you taste it, but there's almost like a, I wouldn't say a char flavor. There's a, there's a certain texture to the eggplant that I think it would be more mushy if they cooked it straight yeah. into the sauce. No, like that's good. I think that's a good way to put it because it has texture. There's a lot of texture. The eggplant maintains its integrity, so it's not just mush. Yeah, it's still kind of firm. Mm. Like you don't feel like it's it's falling off in a bad no, way. No, it's perfect. Like that, actually, that's the best way to put it. Because when I think of a dish like this had in other cuisines, it can be like really just mush. This is not mush. You still have that nice bit of mouthfeel. All right, well, I'm definitely starting to fill up. We definitely ate a good bit of food. So me and John both said we're gonna have a low calorie day today. Let's just say we've already eaten a lot more than we expected, but I just found out they had dessert. So we're gonna stop here, get some to-go containers. We'll have some, our friends will really benefit today, but I'm ready for dessert. They have a few desserts, so I kind of got all of them. So we're gonna have some desserts here momentarily. We'll pack this on up and let's get to dessert. John, but what, quickly, what was your favorite, man? What was your favorite today? For the um, dinners, that is. The dinners. So, Surprisingly, it was two dishes that I didn't expect to be up there. It was the uh, so the baba anoush, like the eggplant, that was delicious. Right, yeah. I would go out of my way to get that, and I would not often do that. It's just to me, it's it's a sauce, just a complimentary thing. But they 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 make it something that's worthwhile having as part of the main dish. It's worth driving an hour for. Yeah, I would actually. I, yeah, I agree definitely. With that. We we had about we had well, almost an hour drive. So all right, cool. I like that. I think was the calamari that was delicious. One of the best calamari dishes I've ever had, hands down. Um, and then the kofta. Kofta is a staple. 
they did it really well. The flavors were on point and it was super moist. Um, and lastly, typically I'm not a huge carb guy, but I can really appreciate how difficult it is to make koshri like, really well. And I would say their koshri is top notch. It's exactly how you would expect to have it whenever it's made at home by my by my parents or by friends and family. True Egyptian. It's true Egyptian. Authentic. So if you're looking for a proper koshri, it's it's uh, something that I highly recommend. I like it. All right, my favorites. What really took me away, the chicken taka, actually was blew me away. I was very surprised and impressed with it. It was just a very very well done moist juicy chicken. Loved that. It had a really nice flavor to it. A little bit of citrus. Um, I have to agree with John, I'm stealing your favorite for this one. That calamari, 10 out of freaking 10, 11 out of 10. Both of us were shocked, blown away. That garlic sauce is the best I have definitely ever had. Is it the best you've ever had? Yeah, it is. Hands down. And I think those really stole the show. Even the uh, the shrimps were excellent. Um, the is it kufta? Kofta, yeah. That's the beef? Yeah. That was really good. And that rice dish, what was it called again? Or the, uh, the carb dish? Koshiri. Koshiri. And that was really, really good. Again, that's my first time ever having it. But it's still, it is sweet. It is savory. It is like slightly acid. It is, it is, it is perfect. It is, I, I really liked that. I was very impressed with that. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, the lamb was great. I think I'll stop there because I'm going to keep going on as I look around at all our empty plates. But that, everybody, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, we have dessert coming. Definitely, I would recommend coming out by. This place definitely deserves, and it is a must try when you're ever in the GTA area. It is just in Mississauga, so well worth it. And uh, let's get some desserts, John. All right, Ron, so here we got some desserts. So we got a little taste of everything. Uh, again, we got Mr. Mo. Mo, walk us through what we have here, my friend. How's it going, guys? It's absolutely delicious. I don't want to mispronounce anything, so... No worries. Okay, so we have an awesome uh, combination of our special desserts here. So you have basbusa, which is semolina coconut cake, okay? okay? And then you have konefa. Now, every other Middle Eastern uh, country makes their konefa with, predominantly with cheese, which okay. is absolutely delicious. <laughs> Egyptians make ours with cream, with ishta inside. Okay. Okay, so it's a sweet cream uh, filling, and that's how we do it, and it's absolutely scrumptious. I'm ready. This is my personal favorite. It is the restaurant specialty. It's called Om Ali, which by definition is Ali's mom. Um, <laughs> I'll let you guys look up uh, why it's traditionally called that, but it's essentially uh, a warm hug in a clay pot. Um, puff pastry soaked in sweet milk and cream, then baked in the oven, topped with coconuts, uh, raisins, and pistachios. Enjoy, my brothers. That sounds amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And then we also have a little bit of rice pudding there too, so that's pretty cool. So, uh, John, do you, what's, do you have expertise where we should start? Let's let's try the kanafa. This one? Yeah. All right. So this one looks kind of like a. I don't want to say like a haystack, but like kanafa. Yeah. Made with a cream? Yeah, so as he explained, oh, let's try it first. Okay, it's kind of like a sweet cake. Man, I love that. That's on the inside. So it's, it's, it's kind of consistent throughout. I thought there was going to be something on the inside. Okay, no. so it's like, a, it's like a sweet cake, sweet shredded cake. Right, so it's, so it's a... Uh, so there's kunafa bil ishta, which is kunafa with cream, or kunafa bil gibna, kunafa with cheese. Egyptians mostly do it with ishta, with the cream, which is very different in texture from the cheese one. Uh, some people like the cheese, some people like the cream. I strongly prefer the cream. So it's it's uh, it's like a sweet cream base. I can taste the cream too. Yeah, it's a sweet cream base, like at the bottom. And they'll, they'll you cook a uh, type of uh, noodle, and then you put it on top. What what That's I a noodle? like? Yeah, it's a noodle, bro. Look wow. at that. Well, I mean, it looks like one, but I figured it was like shredded cake or something. I don't know. No. It's actually noodle. Yeah. So some people, what I actually prefer is when they put the noodles on top, they'll broil it, and so it's crunchy. Mm -hmm. So you have the super soft base, and then a nice and oh, yeah. crunchy top. That's what they got going on. Yeah, I think they have a bit of that going on, but not too much. Yeah. This is soft, but I still like it. It's, uh, this is this is. Delicious, and they have the, the roasted pistachio on top, which is a great addition. What's next, John? This one? Mm -hmm. So this is like so, a cake. Yeah, it's called bezbusa. It's made with uh, cream of wheat. What they'll do is they'll blend around, uh, like they'll in a processor. You'll put uh, whoa. Yeah, you'll put what? Cream of wheat, or you'll put um, okay. Wow. Never mind. I'm gonna try this. 
Dude, mm. that's freaking good. Mm. It's like, I think it's coconut, mm -hmm. but I get pistachio. Very creamy, lots of sweet, that mm -hmm. mouthfeel. It kind of is like, I almost like exploded in my mouth. Yeah. So, so this is a cream of wheat base. Wow. And they'll put sour cream, mm. coconut, uh, sugar, lemon, all this stuff together. Bake it separately, but uh, I would recommend this one is phenomenal. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm. And always with a lot of mm. Egyptian desserts, you'll see roasted pistachio on top. You can't go wrong with roasted pistachio. I love pistachio. I know there's rice pudding here. I try. I see a raisin. I see some coconut. I see some pistachio. Rice pudding. Mm. It's rice pudding. It is a thicker rice pudding. More gelatinous. Has a nice vanilla flavor to it. I like the raisin in it. I've had different rice puddings in different cultures. I have a Danish background. This is more familiar, uh, similar to the rice pudding that I grew up with, um, which is a thicker one, more gelatinous. I've had Mexican rice puddings, which generally tend to be more watery. A little, um, I think a little sweeter too. Mm -hmm. This is really good. I like this. Out of these three, which one would you write home about? Mm -hmm. This cake. The Vesbusa? Yeah, it was great. Okay, that's great. Big fan. Now we have the, basically, translation of Mother's Hug. Oh my Ali. Or, yeah, or sorry. Ollie, Ollie's mom. Ollie's what? mom. So literally we're eating somebody's mom. I'll leave you. I'll just, just, just I'll <laughs> just get your head out of the gutter. I'll just leave that as it should be. So there's pistachio on top. <laughs> Raisins. I think these are layers of, like, pastry and it's baked in the oven it's like, so it's hot. Yeah, I think he said like a. Whoa, dude, look at that! It's like creamy. Yeah, it is layered. It is wet. It's moist. It is dripping on my hand. It is burning, but it is very good looking. Cheers. All right, let's see. Cheers to Ali's mom. Yeah, what is Ali? I don't want to say. It. What does Ali's mom taste like? I guess I don't. Know. Just eat it, dude. <laughs> okay. So I get pastry, a really thick cream. I get some like buttery notes. It almost reminds me of like a, a bachamel, like a, a sweet bachamel. Yeah, like a sweet bachamel, creamy, buttery sauce. And then very, very soft layers of, of pastry. I understand what you mean, it's like a hug, like a warm hug. Yeah. That's delicious. It's very comforting. How would you describe Ali's mom? <laughs> she's got a lot of layers. <laughs> That's good. I mean, she's not shallow. So, so the weird thing with having Oma Ali is that you usually, like with a dessert, you're used to like one or two different textures at a time. This is like six, man. There's the, there's like the soft grated, uh, or the granulated coconut. There's the larger pieces of roasted pistachio. The very top, because it's baked in the oven, is actually kind of not. I wouldn't say crunchy, but more. Um, it's it more has, give to yeah, it. Yeah, it has a. It has definitely a more of a texture. It's kind of like a, you know, like a creme brulee top, and has a bit of a texture to it. It's kind of like this, just on a lesser extent. And it's then we're, caram it's kind of caramelized, milliard brown. Yeah, yeah, totally. And when you get in, you have like the super mushy bread. It's obviously been slow baked. Like slow baked. There's not. There's not even a. There's not even a bit of dry bread to be seen. It no. just soaks in all of the moisture. Yeah. And then a cream on the outside of it. So when you go in, you take one bite and you've got like, you got a ton of stuff going on. So like I think if you were somebody who doesn't really like an overly sweet dessert, you'd still very, 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 very much appreciate this. And with the kind of density and. It's not overly rich, but it does have a bit of a characteristic richness to it. You would definitely share this dessert with like at least one or two people. It is it is not a this is does not have to be a solo bowl event. I would say this is easily something that's shared for four people. Yeah. Like you finish your meal, you're ready for just that that next level. But it also doesn't really seem to be ending. We've been picking at it quite a bit. There's yeah. like a lot in there. Because it's just so like moist and layered and liquidy. But yeah, that was cool, man. You a fan? I liked it. I'm what, a fan. What's your favorite dessert? I'd say the kanafa. I don't know if I'm biased because of my childhood. Uh -huh. It was just my favorite childhood dessert. 
Um, but the Canefa was delicious, and then the Oma Ali comes in second for me. This one. This is delicious. Oh, it's falling apart. Oh, oh guys, I just lost it on the floor. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Place it on the spoon. Mm, but it still tastes great. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I gotta go clean that up. Throw food all over the restaurant. Huge thanks to everybody here at Mus Musrawi. Mus Musrawi. Musrawi. Excuse my <laughs> pronunciation. That everybody really enjoyed it. Great food. Definitely a good spot to check out. If you want Egyptian cuisine? This is the place in and around Toronto, Ontario, and in Canada. So, everybody, until next time, say happy out the hungry, happy eating. John, thank you for joining. Any final words? Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Good food, good times. At that, until next time, everybody.